Yes, go on. And back. Well, good evening. Wonky Astronomer here. Well, I'm very excited tonight because we've got a high probability occultation. Uh, a cult watcher is telling me I've got a 64% probability of a positive tonight. And I haven't had a, a positive for quite a while. So, uh, it's pretty exciting. And not only that, it's a, it's a fairly bright star. It's uh, magnitude 12.5, asteroids 14.4. But uh, the target star is there. I'll just bring that exposure up a little bit so you can see it better. There it is. There. The asteroid itself is called uh, 954 Lee. Let's just have a look at where this asteroid is in relation to the other planets. Here you can see the inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and then Mars outside that. And then outside the orbit of Mars, we can see the asteroid 954 Li. And in fact, it orbits in the main belt of asteroids, which is where most of the solar system's asteroids are, between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. And this particular asteroid takes about five and a half years to orbit the Sun, and its diameter is about 58 kilometers. But uh, asteroids of that size are too small to uh, have gravity force them into a sphere. So they're usually irregular shapes. We, we often refer to them as potatoes in space because they tend to be potato shaped. The observers we've got on this tonight, we've got three observers. Uh, so Dave and I are in the predicted path. Bill is way out outside the three sigma zone. Dave's a little closer to the center than I am, so his probability is a bit higher, at 73%. Still a pretty good chance. Let's have a look at the map. You can see the path there. I'm the red one there. Dave's this one. And uh, Bill is way down here. You can see that the, the path also crosses New Zealand. No observers that I know of in New Zealand for this one. Now, I've got the... Um, live chat going. Dave is uh, on target. Okay, so now we're recording and uh, two minutes to the event. I'll just check what the uh, maximum duration is. We've got a maximum duration of 4.1 seconds and uh, an error of four seconds. I think Dave and I are the only ones in the chat. So 30 seconds. Let's watch this star now. This one here. See if it disappears. Yes, gone. And back. That was like uh, about two seconds, I think. Type yes. About two seconds. Come on, Dave. Tell me what happened. I think it's very likely that Dave got a positive because he's closer to the center than I am. Dave says yes for me too. Yay. All right, shall I shall I check it right now? Let's let's run it through Tangra right now. I'm impatient. That's my dome rotating. So this is Tangra. This is a piece of software that we use to generate light curves to uh, you know measure the uh, the light uh, of the star over time. So I should have video there. That one, which is the one I just did. I'll just do a quick, um, a quick version. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. I usually do a light curve for the whole thing, but I'll go to 1445. It's about 20 seconds before. 
Um, okay, so then we pick the star. So I add that one. I'll have it auto track because it's. Oh, wait a minute. No, I won't. I'll. I'll do fixed relative to guiding stars. Add that object, and then I need a couple of other stars for comparison and for tracking. So that one's auto tracked. Let's do this one. Okay. Add that one and start. Okay, so I'll stop it there. It's enough to uh, to just see what the curve looks like. Okay, look at that. Very nice. Tangra is able to read the timestamps on the video. So you've got these, uh, the timestamp here. And Tangra can actually read that. As you can see along the x-axis, it's got the, the times. And if you click on any uh, sample, you can read the time over here. So the disappearance is at about 1446.09.1 and reappears at 1446.12.5. Yeah, so about 3.4 seconds. It's now a couple of days later and I've generated my full light curve. That's it there. And Dave has also sent me his light curve. And uh, we both extracted our timings from that. And uh, Dave has used those timings to generate a chord plot. Now a chord is uh, essentially a, a cross-section of the asteroid, which is derived from our timings. And uh, this plot shows the, the two chords that we recorded. The, um, the green or blue one there is Dave's and the red one is mine. And the gap in the line between here and here represents the time that the star was hidden by the asteroid. And so that corresponds to a physical cross-section across the asteroid, or a physical diameter. As you can see, uh, Dave's chord is a little longer than mine, which shows that, as expected, the asteroid is not spherical. It's probably quite an irregular shape. It turns out that um, this particular asteroid has never had a multi-chord observation before. This is the first one. And uh, so there's no um, pre-existing shape model for this asteroid. So the best we can do is to fit an ellipse to the data that we have. So this ellipse that's shown on the plot here is just a, an approximation of uh, the shape of the asteroid. And over time, as more observations are done, a more accurate shape can be uh, determined. Well, there you have it. The first successful multi-chord occultation by asteroid 954 Lee.